The 500 kilo deadlift was the most incredible lift in human history, one of the most dangerous things I've ever done. When I stepped up to that bar, there was nothing in my mind that doubted myself. When I started to lift it, I actually had my eyes closed because I was in a totally different place. I was, I was in a place where no man's been before. You know, it was, it was the, the same scenario as probably a mother pulling up a burning car for a child. You know, it was those sort of thoughts. It was very, very disturbing, very dark. You know, something I could never openly say. But those are the thoughts you've got to put into your head to lift a weight like that. When I stood there with that bar and I opened my eyes and just the feeling of looking to a 12,000 strong crowd and like, yes, I've done this. And then I just woke up on my back. The life of a strong man is very solo. You know, it's a very lonely sport. Every day you've got to get up and you've got to give it your 100%. You've got to do an hour and a half physio every day, an hour and a half hot cold treatment every day, an hour and a half stretching every day. You've then got to go training for three or four hours, weight training, and you've got to do your hours cardio. Even to the point where I built my own hyperbaric chamber and I was spending an hour and a half in my own hyperbaric chamber every night. It's a full-time job. It's not just a, a fact of going training, lifting weights for three, four hours a day. It is a whole combination of things to get this right. And you've got to put yourself in the right position to be the best. Uh, Money is a big factor. I was spending 250 quid a week on food. Uh, leading up to a contest, around about 12 and a half thousand calories a day. Literally setting alarms on your phone every hour and a half to two hours, you've got to eat on the dot. So, and that's including sleep as well. You know, get up at three in the morning, I'd be eating raw steaks, protein shakes, up again at seven, full English breakfast. A second breakfast at sort of 10 o'clock, where it'd be fruit, beef jerky. Um, snacks in between breakfast and dinner would be 150 gram of cashew nuts, liters of cranberry juice, milk, protein shakes. Dinner would be steak and chips, salmon and pasta, chicken and pasta, rice. For pudding, it'd be half a family cheesecake because we need the calories in there as well. And then a second dinner around about three o'clock would be, for example, tuna sandwiches, flapjacks, five or six portions of fruit, Lucas Aids, cranberry juice. During training, more cranberry juice with carb powder, liter protein shakes with full fat milk, coconut water after the, after the session to replenish. It'd be home. Evening meal would be a curry, spag bol, steak and chips again, and then the other half of the family cheesecake for pudding. Uh, later on in the night would be protein bars, pro, you know, beef jerky, and then I'd take snacks to bed as well, and that would be usually protein bars or, or beef jerky and, and raw steak as well. You've got to be constantly grazing like a cow. Uh, it is relentless, and you've got to be absolutely obsessed, obsessed to be the best in the world at strongman or anything. I mean, at my peak, I was 32 stone in body weight, and even to get up and get out of bed at that weight is, is hard. Couldn't fit in my car. I couldn't fit on trains, can't fit on planes. Um, I've broke hundreds of seats in restaurants and at home. I suppose one of the worst factors is health. You know, being 32 stone, although so, you, know, you might look healthy on the outside, your body's on the limits all the time. Blood markers, the kidney, liver markers are through the roof. The hemoglobins are through the roof. It's a very dangerous place to be. And this is what people take for granted and something that I've got to do to be the best is be huge. Lifting the half ton deadlift, virtually the whole world saw as impossible. The current world record at the time when I did it was 463. So I beat the record by 8%, which I think is, a, is well, it's a huge margin. It's like Usain Bolt taking a second off his 100 meter sprint. To pull the 500 kilo was just the most immense moment of my life. One lift, three or four seconds, that to me will live on in my mind forever and go down in the history books forever. After the 500 kilo deadlift, I was somewhat in a very, uh, very bad place in my head, very bad place in, in health. I remember when I did the lift, I did a little speech to the crowd and then I got backstage and I just completely collapsed. You know, it, it was as if I just run a marathon, even though for that four seconds, four or five seconds of lifting, it felt like I'd done two or three days of running. 
I got backstage, uh, I worked with the, the medical crew for some time. My blood pressure was through the roof and it was over the 200 marks. My heart, heart rate was through the roof. It was like 160, 170, getting towards a max. Um, I couldn't see properly. I lost my vision. I had black spots. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't see it straight. I was dizzy, I was passing out. I suffered very badly with the, the, the symptoms of concussion. You know, I couldn't remember things. Working with my physios, I found two or three bulged vertebrae in my back. I had very heavy bruising in my spine. Other than that, you know, all fit and healthy. Um, I think one of the biggest things after doing such a lift was the, 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 the major depression. And it's like every sportsman, once you've been on a massive high, there's always a massive low. And the, it, it definitely hit me hard. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are and what you do, the next day you've still got to go back to normal life and take your kids to school and, and go shopping. And you know, you know better than anybody else. And I suppose that's what every athlete wants. You know, you want that superior feeling all the time, but it doesn't last forever. And that's when the depression hits. But like everything I do in my life, I set goals, I achieve them and then I move on, I set a new goal. Otherwise you dwell on that achievement forever. There were three, three goals I set on my, on my journey when I started out Strongman. Number one was to win the world's strongest man. Number two was to hold a world record in the deadlift. And number three was to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now by this point, I'd done two of those and then it was the world's strongest man. People said I was the strongest man that ever walked the planet when I pulled 500 kilos. But then there were people that said, how can he be if he's never won the world's strongest man? I can't take criticism very well. I can't take negativity. And I have to go out and prove people wrong. And that's exactly what I did. I set goals, I achieved them. And, and I did that. You know, I achieved the world's strongest man. And what keeps me in, inspired is the, the naysayers. Not the haters, the naysayers. Everyone's got haters. And it's not in a way of, I told you so, ha ha. It's in a way of, you see, you know, if you actually put your heart and soul and mind and dedicate yourself to something, you can achieve great things. Don't be so naive. And that's the message I wish to portray to the world. So in the world of Strongman, I've achieved my three goals. And I think it's come to the time for, for me to move on. You know, I've done a lot of damage to my body, but not to the point where it can't be reversed. You know, I've done a lot of damage internally and externally. Now it's time for me to move on from the sport and do bigger and not necessarily greater things, but different things. I want to copy in the footsteps of my idol, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I use sport as a stepping stone into, into these different places. And I want to get into the, the realm of acting, film work. Uh, I've already started doing a lot of acting lessons, going to castings. So that's what's in the pipeline for me. Like I did with the strong one, I'm going to get my head down, I'm going to give it all I can, and hopefully I can become something in the film industry. You. Congratulations, you're officially amazing. The Guinness Book of Records is a book I've read avidly from a child. Every year, I've always got my hands on the book one way or the other. And it, the section I'd always turn to would be the sports section. As a child, I always visioned myself on those pages growing up. Every time I got that book, I'm always looking at the records thinking, oh God, that, that's added another 20 kilo. Jeez, you know, it's getting harder and harder every year. To finally get your name in the book is it's a, it's a dream come true. It's a childhood dream come true, 100%.